everybody that's here tonight, and for all of you who will be watching this program sometime in the future when it's aired on local TV, this is the 24th annual Stoughton Area Community <coughs> Foundation meeting. Uh, and it will be a big year next year when we celebrate the 25th. One of the things that we've already talked about is trying to get as many past Stoughton Area Community Foundation board members present and maybe say, take some pictures and celebrate the first 25 years and create a little bit more enthusiasm as we plan and have vision for the next 25. But tonight we're here to learn a little bit about the Stoughton Area Community Foundation. My name is Jerry Went. I have the honor this year of serving as president. I've been aware of the foundation for a number of years, got involved on the board not too many years ago, and have been asked to serve this year. I will introduce the rest of the board members in a few moments, but most important to all of you here and to everybody watching, what are three of the most important things this organization does? And I'm not going to ask for responses from the group here, but the, most of you are here tonight to give your grant reports, so I would hope that you would know one of the three, <laughs> okay? So, one of those three really, really important things that the Stoughton Area Community Foundation has done over the years is provide grants to local organizations so that you can do the work that is most important, that is a passion for you and other members of your group, and make Stoughton a better place to live and work and recreate. So, we all know the answer to one of them, and it is grants. <laughs> And without putting any pressure on anybody else, I'll help you with the other two. The second probably really biggest thing that we do as an organization is present scholarships. And Ann Ash is going to, is the chairperson of our scholarship committee and she will give you some more details. But we are very blessed not to have, not only to have two very long running scholarship, uh, well-established scholarships that have been given out, but we also, Fortunately, have had some new ones added recently, and you will hear about some of those in her report. So the second biggest thing is scholarships. And the third, probably the most unknown or kind of hidden, unless you're part of that group or are a treasurer, is we help organizations that aren't currently of a tax status that they can operate on their own. So we have what's called pass-through um, accounts. So we take in their money and uh, manage it or, or hold it. Probably the biggest thing that the foundation did years ago is with the tornado relief. Another really huge project was Veter Veterans Memorial uh, Park. And there's been dozens of others as um, the years have gone on. And again, next year on the 25th, we're going to have a list of all those so that we can again rejoice in all that work. But as far as pass-throughs, we're working with the Kiwanis Foundation, the START program, the Seniors in Need, the Library, Library Endowment, FFA Endowment, Buddy of Mine, which is going to get switched tonight because we're going to move that into the general fund. Um, Stoughton Opera House Friends, Stoughton Youth Center Endowment, Stoughton Innovation Center, the HATS program, and the Stoughton Wellness Coalition. So, the three biggies. If anybody says, what do you know about that Stoughton Area Community Foundation? You should say, they provide grants, and this year it's over $55,000 in grants that were given out. We had uh, legitimately over $95,000 in requests. So unfortunately, some of your groups didn't get as much as what we had hoped to give you but we're working hard to get donations to make those things happen. So, we've got the grants, we've got the scholarships, and we've got the pass-through work that's being done. And I would be remiss in not thanking all the past board members uh, for their contributions. And I would like to have the current board members, if they would start coming up so I could introduce you uh, to the rest of the group. And again, we'll have our brief meeting, and then we'll get right into the grant reports. So, uh, like I said, I'm Jerry Wentz, serving as president. My next two guy, 
It is Dan Pruer. So come on up here so we can be in some type of logical order. Our treasurer, who has been serving, um, he served years ago and is serving again. Then Vince, I don't know why last names are so hard for me so much, but Bleakin is our treasurer. Chris Kotlowski is in Arizona supporting her daughter who's in a golf tournament, so she couldn't be with us tonight. Cindy McGlynn is out of the country. I think she's on her way back, but she was supporting her son that was playing basketball overseas. Uh, Lisa Fernan, who has um, worked with us for a number of years, we appreciate her expertise. Bethany Plymers, who is um, new to the board this last year and contributing greatly. Jonathan Lewis also couldn't be here tonight. He came down with a COVID positive test on Sunday, and uh, that's unfortunate because he's been serving for a number of years also. Ann Ash, who has uh, been a valuable member and representing the high school and chairs our scholarship committee, which you will hear about in uh, just a little bit. Another new member on the committee, uh, person on the committee is Bev Fergus, and we appreciate uh, her service. And finally, Jessica Rotko is uh, this year on, on the board. And we have some new members that are gonna be joining us. Might as well come up now. Bethany, you wanna come up? And Laura isn't here yet. And Laura's not here yet. But we do have, and you want to introduce uh, one of our new members? Are you down there? Yes, she is. Oh, there you go. Yeah. This um, is, oh, you're doing it? Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> this is Laura Ingram. Uh, she's lived in town about five years, and she is currently the director of sourcing at Land's End, and she'll be joining us in the new year. Right. And uh, go ahead if you want to introduce her. And sure. this is Bethany Anderson. She's a reading specialist at the high school, um, and is going to take over and work on scholarships. Take over for me, I guess, or one of us. <laughs> And Bev, you just want to mention the other person coming on board? Sure, Laura Thorpe. Um, she used to be an educator at, in the community and now does several different jobs, but she'll be a huge asset to the board. Good. Well, thank you all. And even though we got a small group, let's give them a round of applause for all of you. What does it take to serve on the Stoughton Air Community Foundation Board? It takes somebody who has the enthusiasm, interest, and the time. It's a three-year commitment, and tonight we have four people who are going off the board, and as you just heard, we have three people coming on. So despite us trying to do a pretty good job in recruitment, we're still looking to fill one position yet. So if you know somebody that has a passion to doing good things for Stoughton, uh, that might work out. So, without any further ado, I basically have just covered the next item, overview of 2021, except as we work through our uh, brief board meeting, you might hear a few more things or have a few more questions. So, um, we are going to go to approval of the minutes, and actually the board got all the minutes sent to them, so if I could have a motion from a board member to approve the minutes, from last year's Stoughton Area Community Foundation. So moved. It's been moved, do I have a second? Second. It's been moved and seconded that we approve the annual meeting report from last year from the Stoughton Area Community Foundation. Any additions or corrections, board members? Seeing none, we'll proceed to vote. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. Motion passes. We'll go on to the treasurer's report, and again, the treasurer's report has been sent out to all the board members. Vince uh, might have a couple quick comments, but we did put a few numbers up here. Uh, in 2019, the board was responsible for managing and uh, working with uh, a little bit over one and three quarter million dollars. Uh, in 2020, it was a little over two million, and this past year is a little bit above that. We annually pay out with scholarships and with the grants and with um, the other programs uh, over $100,000 a year. And the actual full treasurer's report is quite lengthy. And so without getting into tons of detail, we also just wanted to emphasize that our expenses are very low each year, 
all of the board members, it's voluntary, and so we have a minor amount of expenses with filing um, and different types of things with the taxes and insurance and printing costs, but we run a pretty lean operation and we hope to continue that with the years to come. So, those of you who got the treasurer's report, let's have a motion to approve them to start with, and then I'll ask for any additions or corrections. Is there a motion to approve the treasurer's report? Is sent out? I make a motion to approve. Okay, Lisa, is there a second? Second. Okay, is there any additions or corrections that anybody has? And by the way, those of you in the audience or are watching the program, you can go on our webpage and you can make contact with me or any of the other board members and we'll be happy to provide more details. But um, in, in light of this night that the emphasis is on the grants, we want to be kind of as expedient as possible. So any concerns any board members have with what was sent out? Seeing none, all those in favor say, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, say no. Motion passes. With that, we'll go right into a, a scholarship report. So Anne, if you come forward and share some things. Again, of those big three, um, if you're a senior in high school and getting a scholarship on May 11th, uh, that's gonna become pretty important to you. So we wanted to give that some credence and some attention tonight. So go ahead, Ann. I don't have a big voice, so if you can't hear me, please let me know. So um, the Stoughton Area Community Foundation has managed the Paul Sunby and Bob Green Memorial Scholarships for the past several years. This year they've added two new ones, the Marv and Burt Klitsky Memorial and the Bev Fergus Family Leadership Award. As the scholarship coordinator at the high school, I work with Stoughton Area Community Foundation to select the recipients. The committee looks at the applicants and picks based on merit, grade point average, and overall strength of the application. Specifically, the Paul Sunby is awarded to students pursuing degrees in the field of environmental science. They award up to 5, 000, or five <laughs> scholarships each year. Since its inception in 2014, the Paul Sunby has awarded um, just under $300,000 in scholarship money to graduating seniors from Stone. The Bob Green was established in 2017 for student, students pursuing degrees in agriculture or a related field. That money has typically gone to two students and the awards range between 3,500 up to 10,000. This fund has financed 73,500 in scholarships since its inception. The Marvin Burt Klitsky is new, brand new this year. It's a $1,000 scholarship with no specific criteria. And the Beth Fergus Family Leadership Award is a $7,000 scholarship that goes to one student who has demonstrated commitment to social justice and community activism. The four funds together account for about 25% of the total scholarship money awarded each year through the high school. Um, this, the, um, so the Stoughton Area Community Foundation partnership for us has become a really important part of the rich tradition of the Stoughton High School's honors program. And I just think it's a really great example of how the community in Stoughton has partnered with the high school in recognizing our students and um, supporting their dreams. If you haven't been to an honors program, and I know a lot of you in this room have, um, watch it on TV, attend. It's really an amazing um, testament to the Stone community. This year, I think our, our figure is we're gonna be awarding 200, over 288,000. So it's huge, um, but thank you. Okay. Um. I want to personally thank Ann for her leadership and all of the people on the honors program. We do have a separate committee within the Stoughton Area Community Foundation that meets to decide on those that we offer. And um, in cooperation, one of them is still um, through the school, but um, it's a um, wonderful opportunity to read about what the students are doing and where they're going. And it's always a highlight to get thank you letters from them uh, in college as they're going forward. So, thanks, Ann. Uh, our next uh, report is from Dan. He heads up our marketing, and he, uh, as a good marketing guy, as he comes forward, he puts 
his email up here, and the other person on the committee is Jessica, and they're both coming up. Yep. So they've got a few things to share with you uh, along that line. Uh, mostly what we want to talk about is uh, what marketing means. You know, what is marketing all about when you have an organization like this? Mainly, a lot of it's visibility. I guess I can take this off for now here. So a lot of it's visibility, and as all, everyone on the committee has said, I've heard about this SACF, but I have no idea what it is or what it, what it does. And so that's part of our mission is get that out there. Um, and Jess and I, every week, we have a new post on our Facebook. And so if you are not a friend or uh, someone who likes our Facebook page, get out there. Because we want to, we want to get, it, get that message out there. We try to do reports on every one of your groups. And some of you have participated in this, but we need more information, right? That's, we're, we're, we want pictures, we want more information, so we can get your story out there. That's your opportunity. So uh, please, this is our, our, our begging phase. We're gonna communicate with you, we'll send you a note, an email from Jess or I, and we'll say, please send us stuff, because we're there for you, okay? And then of course we run the website and that kind of thing. Uh, the other thing that, that Jerry mentioned was that um, this is the 20, year 24, which means 25 is next year. We've started what we're calling a growth initiative. And the growth initiative is just that. We want to grow this, this number we give out every year uh, in grants. We want that to grow. Jerry said we had a ton of money that we, that we wanted to give out, uh, but we just didn't have that here. So our growth initiative is to grow 25% by the end of our 25th year. So that means 15% this year and 10% next year. And we are actually chugging along on that goal. So if you have um, thought about um, giving money, even on a, even 20 bucks a month uh, on a regular basis to have it taken out, that's going to get us to this goal and allow us in a couple of years to really blow out all of those numbers. So um, that's a big deal. So growth and, and information now for you guys. So please, when you get a note from, from Jess, um, make sure you respond. Uh, otherwise, we'll, we will track you down. So, <laughs> all right? That's it, right? Yeah. Okay. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you. And I should just add to their report, the money that we get donated in each year comes from a mailing to uh, about 250 different uh, individuals or businesses. Uh, it usually goes out in October. And uh, we ask for funds, and we... Um, that money all goes into the general fund and it is invested and is yielding a return so that we can spend that money back and the way the Constitution and everything is set up we pay out as much as we can back each year uh, to help as many organizations. At this point I do need to give credit to uh, probably two really important entities that aren't here tonight but deserve our attention. We do work with Jessica Knudsen as our financial um, investment person who does uh, a great job reporting out to us where we're at, where we're going, and dealing with all of the logistics and the paperwork to make sure that everything is done correctly. And then the other one that really deserves a ton of credit is the Bryant Foundation, which uh, is our major contributor each year and allows us the opportunity to give out more grant money uh, than what we would be able to do just based upon the donations and the investment <coughs> returns. So, here we are. <laughs> it's your turn. And I will take a second seat to where we're going. And I, um, again, I'm going to go right down the list. And if somebody is here that knows something about these organizations and nobody is here to speak, You'll have your chance at the end, okay? And uh, as we walk through these and move through these, it's going to go pretty rapidly. So here we go. Jerry, can I ask a question? So you, if we know something and we know they're not coming, do you right. want us to wait until the end? I thought, yeah, yeah okay. because they might show up. There is one person who told me they were going to be a little late. Okay. So, okay. and they're up in this group. Okay. So. Okay. So Aligning the Stars Theater, I don't believe anybody is here from that group, but again, we'll come back to that at the end. Eyes of Hope, same thing. So our first group is Mr. Mike Connor, a volunteer, a visionary, a person who um, has a passion for what he does, 
and he's here to report on the Fab Lab at Stoughton High School. And I can see Dan's already standing up, so evidently. <laughs> <laughs> he's supposed to sit down and wait there. Yeah. Or are you going to wave your he's arms? Gonna, he's yeah. Gonna, yeah. He's gonna, okay, I will okay. communicate. So, uh, good evening, and I could talk about the Fab Lab for three hours, and you guys would all be asleep. So, um, the Fab Lab is the first Fab Lab in Wisconsin, the second in the United States to be housed in a uh, public high school, right? So that's pretty awesome. We are nine years old. We're going to be 10 years old um, next year. So we're going to have a little party this fall. And uh, yeah, so um, it's a STEM lab. We have 3D printers and laser cutters. We have all those things for the high school students, right? And then we also put one in the middle school. So. Um, but tonight, I'm here to talk about the really cool thing that we do during the summer, the Summer Enrichment Program, which is the guitar program. It started out, Alliant Energy was our, our main um, sponsor the first year, that was 2015, um, and it was called Girls Make Electric Guitars. We only did it for girls, it was a, it was a way to get girls interested in, in STEM, right, in, in STEAM. And, and so we make these full body electric guitars, you can go on our website uh, fablabstone.org and just look under news and you'll see the guitars being built. We've built 73 guitars in the last four or five years and uh, and they play loud and proud. <laughs> um, and so it's a really neat thing because we start out with a block of maple and we buy the next now but uh, the block of maple is machined by the, uh, the students. Now we have boys and girls in. And last year um, uh, the Stoughton Community Foundation supported us as well. And this coming year, we'll have it in June. And uh, yeah, they supported us with a really nice grant. And so that grant um, actually really helped us because this grant that um, Stoughton Area Community Foundation gave us um, was matched by the Lion Energy Foundation. And then the school district also chipped in for the, for the um, instructors. Um, so we've gone, we've kind of grown from this four or five guitars to making 10 or 12 guitars. We've grown from one instructor to two, and uh, it's a pretty cool program. So uh, I don't know what else you want me to say about it. On your web page, you have pictures of the guitars? Yeah, so there's pictures of the guitars up on the website. You go to uh, fablabstone.org and then look, look under the news, and you'll see our different years of guitars. And it's, it's, it's a sweet thing to say, to see. And it's a, it's a great program to you know, bring the science, the technology, the engineering, the art, and the math together in one place, right? I mean, they do the soldering, they do the, the fretting, they do the assembly, they make the bodies, they do it all. Finishing, yeah. And it's all free, which is really cool, yeah. Which, what would be the cost per guitar? Roughly? Uh, well, the, the, car, the guitars are worth about $950. We build them for about $225 with materials. And then we also give them a case, and the case is like 30 bucks. So that's pretty cool. The only thing they don't get is an amplifier, but we have amplifiers <laughs> that they can borrow, and usually the parents are happy that they don't have any. <laughs> <laughs> any questions that you have for me about the guitar program or the Fab Lab? Um, just a quick pitch on the Fab Lab. We are open to the community. We have community uh, uh, during the week, usually Wednesday or Thursday, or Tuesday or Wednesday, Thursday night, we have adult child workshops, so those are workshops from fourth to eighth grade and an adult comes along with. And then on Saturdays we have adult workshops from nine until noon and we always build something cool. So if you're into the makerspace movement, which a lot of you are, um, come and join us, go ahead. I may mention, I, I, I happen to know a student who a couple years ago uh, participated and uh, uh, to this day it's one of the most memorable events mm -hmm. in her life she said she will never forget the fact that she finally made something on her own that works. Awesome. <laughs> so awesome. It, it had a great effect on her. Oh, thank you. Thank you for that plug. Yeah. Thank you so much. <laughs> yes. Uh, we don't, I believe, have anybody here right now from Friends of Badfish Creek. But we'll wait at the end. Or do you want to report on it? No, I'm actually next. I was you, like, oh, you were I'm just here. so <laughs> eager to get going. Okay, so our next speaker is Friends of St. Anne's School. And is it Cara? Cara. Cara Royce. 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 
Roy Sung. Yeah, that works for me. Someday I will do better at balancing everything. Take it Don't away, Carol. Oh, well, thank you. So, you don't want to say that too much. I'll be on all night. Uh, but I'm very honored and grateful to be here to uh, represent the Friends of St. Anne's School. I am Carol Roysom, and I'm the principal at St. Anne's. And St. Anne's School is a uh, K through 8 school, uh, including a, then a 4K um, site. We are a site for the Stoughton School District. So in total, we have about 150 students. So we are small, but we pack a punch. And uh, we are, again, very grateful. I'm, I'm honored to be here to um, share with you the scholarship that, or the grant that we did receive this past year. Uh, we'd like to think that we wish um, that COVID was done and gone, but as we are finding uh, this year, of course, another year of new challenges, and now we're having little spikes and all that. So at St. Anne's, we have continued our uh, mission to be in person, to provide instruction for our kids, to love them dearly, to take them and, um, and do everything we can for them. And so we have used the uh, grant to go toward a uh, water bottle filling station because of course during COVID we turned off our water fountains and in our school we ended up, that meant going old school with uh, water jugs, delivering them to each of the classrooms. Thank you, Mr. Plum. And, uh, and running it around and trying to um, you know, keep the, the kids uh, hydrated. So we now are getting the water bottle um, station, which now that we have kids bringing their own water bottles will help greatly and still uh, be hygienic and um, help us to you know, continue that goal of not spreading um, viruses, all sorts of viruses now we discover. So again, thank you so much. Uh, for including us in your uh, awards this year. We just are incredibly grateful. So, uh, thank you. Uh, the next one on the list is Girls on the Run, and that person told me they would not be able to be here, but did submit a report. Girls on the Run is an after-school empowerment program whose mission is to inspire third through fifth grade girls to find joy, help, confidence through running and our experience-based curriculum. This season, they're serving 1,100 girls in South Central Wisconsin, represents about 75 teams. They meet twice a week in small teams. Girls on the Run teaches third through fifth grade girls life skills through engaging lessons, and fun movement and running activities. Curriculum is taught through a certified Girls on the Run coaches and helps each girl celebrate her unique strengths and realizes her power to change the world. During the program, each team creates and executes a local community impact project to demonstrate the unimaginable strength that comes from helping others. Uh, last year, the Stoughton community team created cards and signs to thank the essential workers at Nazareth Health and at the Rehab Center. Finally, at each season's conclusion, the girls and their running buddies complete a celebrity 3.1 mile running event that gives the girls a tangible sense of achievement and a framework for setting and achieving life goals. So with confidence levels from girls generally are dropping uh, at age nine and physical activity levels peaking at age 10, now more than ever, our world needs girls that are equipped to manage the challenges that come with adolescence. According to results from our recent report, over 97% of participants learned critical life skills relating to managing emotions, resolving conflict, and helping others. Over 85% of participants experienced improved levels of confidence and connection. The $300 we received from the Stoughton Area Community Foundation, we were able to fully support the participants with financial need in the fall of 2021 and provide them shoes, clothes, so that they could safely and meaningfully participate in the program. Funds also supported our program supplies, coach background checks, season ending 5K event, and the 5K run, which was an explosion of girl power that took place, Wanaki Community Center. Your support also puts in a, us in a position to sustain interest in our program and brings 
Teams back to us, both Gigantz and Sand Hill Elementary School. This spring, we're serving a record number of 38 girls, and nearly 35% of them required financial help. We are so grateful to the community and Stoughton for their generous support, and we look forward to inspiring joy, health, and confidence. And that report comes to us from Christine Benedict. So, we give that group a hand. And next on the list is Habitat for Humanity, Heather North. Thanks for being here and uh, take it away. Thank you. My name is Heather North and I'm with Habitat for Humanity of Dane County specifically, but I live in Stone, so I'm always plugging the community that way. Um, so we are so grateful for the funding that we got from the Community Foundation um, because, as my shirt says, Habitat is all about envisioning a world where everyone has a decent place to live. And what a lot of people don't know is that we don't just give houses away. People are, um, they have to qualify. They have to put in sweat equity hours, which is about 275 to 320 hours um, before they can qualify for their home. On top of that, they also take about seven or eight, depending on their situation, homeowner classes from financial capability to just being a good neighbor and keeping, you know, how to upkeep your lawn and certain things like that that if you've never owned a home, you may not know about. So what we used our funds for, as everyone probably knows, the supply chain and the cost of lumber and things like that has been skyrocketing. And if you haven't been, there is a, especially um, near the school, high school specifically, Able Court is our new neighborhood. It's a nice little cul-de-sac where we are building Technically, it's going to home eight families, but it is four twin homes that we are taking in shifts. So right now, we are doing two of them on one side of the street. And so our funds from the foundation only covered, and I am so appreciative, but this is to tell you how much the prices have increased, only covered <laughs> a fraction of the lumber needed for one floor, just one level of one of those homes. So just to kind of bring that home, but we are so appreciative for that, um, but just to kind of make you kind of think of the cost of building right now, especially when we are trying to do it so affordably for our families. So again, we are so appreciative for the partnership with the foundation. And I appreciate your time. <laughs> Thank you very much, Heather, and best of luck in all that building. Yeah. Uh, we are going to go next to Just Stowe Storytelling, Kay Weed. Thanks, Jordan. Thank you very much to the Foundation for the support that you gave us this year and for the last several years. We bring professional storytellers into the school. Many of the children, parents, and teachers have never seen professional storytellers. And this uh, last couple of years, we've aligned it directly with the new curriculum, Wit and Wisdom, that has been adopted by the school district. And so it's really tied in, especially this year, where especially this last, uh, this last two months of the school year, every single one of the elementary schools will be getting a um, professional storyteller to come in for over two days' time to do a residency with third graders, because the third graders, in their Wit and Wisdom, that's stories. And so um, the benefit from the foundation has been to be able to pay those people to come in and educate those kids, as well as in the beginning of the school year when we couldn't get into the schools and we didn't know exactly what was going to be happening, we continued a video storytelling project that we made for the schools. So it's been a real benefit. Thank you very much. Thank you, Kay. And again, Continued success, you're a long-running, positive contributor to this community, as well as everybody else. And in, in some ways, I don't know if there's any chills of excitement going up and down your spines, but mine is to be in a room with so many gifted, caring, loving volunteers. And um, so this is a really special night for me, and I hope you go away with the same feeling. We're going to uh, Kiwanis Club of Stoughton, don't believe anybody's here from that or the Madison Reading Program. And I need to report on the Neighborhood Free Health Clinic, but I'll do that at the end. 
and a couple others. So surprise, Amy, we're up to you. So, and we are going to, after Amy Selinski, go a little bit offline. <coughs> Donna, we'll go after, you'll go after her. Oh. Because I know you have another meeting to get to at seven. But, uh, so, Amy Selinski with Reach Dane. Thanks for being here. Thank you for inviting me. Um, I am the Comprehensive Services Director at Reach Dane, Amy Selinski. I'm also a Stoughton High School graduate, um, so this community has a special place in my heart. Um, and uh, the teachers actually reached out to me and uh, let me know about this grant um, and what they wanted for their Stoughton uh, Head Start classroom um, was additional materials for um, the children to have sensory experiences um, inside the classroom and out outdoors as well. So they bought all kinds of fun things and I have um, pictures to, to leave and can also email them to the marketing team about just the, uh, just, you can see that they're very happy uh, with the new materials um, and uh, we serve children uh, that are in poverty um, and often come with um, experiences that can, um, where they can have increased behaviors in the classrooms and so we're just continually trying to um, give them resources to be able to um, help them settle in their bodies and be able to uh, learn. Um, so uh, we're just very grateful for the grant that you gave us and uh, thank you. Thank you again for being here tonight. So next I'm gonna call on Donna Tarpinian who will tell us about uh, Stoughton Holding. Center. Richard, you. you're going to be after her. Um, I'm going to try to draw something. I'm a terrible artist, but I just want <laughs> you to think. You, tell me if you know what it, what it is. Nike, Nike, Nike. Yep. And like this is the worst one <laughs> on my part. But what's this one? Under Armour. Yeah. So um, I just wanted to show you this because um, kiddos come in to the building center and grab a shirt that has this on it or this on it and you do not know how it makes their day and makes them feel great. And so um, the clothing center is, um, it's been around for a really long time. Um, it is housed in Covenant Lutheran Church. I chair the social um, justice committee and we kind of keep kind of watch over that, but Liz Menzer is actually our coordinator and she works really hard. Um, we were closed for a long time during COVID, but we reopened um, and kind of revamped the whole place, wanted to re take away the stigma associated with getting free clothing. Um, so we have really high standards. We um, want nice quality clothing that's clean, that's you know trendy or up to date. Um, and I brought these for anyone to look at. There's some great photos. Um, one of the things that really helped us with this, this grant was we were in a really small room at Covenant and we were able to move into, we doubled our size into a room that's twice as big and we needed <coughs> clothing racks. And so we um, used a lot of the funds to buy these great clothing racks that you see in the stores and we, they're on wheels and we can really be flexible. Um, it, it doubled what we could hang. Um, and also now we have the old room as our intake room. So we really tripled <laughs> in size, but we really have a lot of um, people coming in. We have a lot of great batch of volunteers. Um, we also use some of the money besides that we used, bought some bins and some hangers and just things to help us um, be more efficient in our sorting and, and um, intake process. Um, this is just a really great resource and I just want to make sure that everyone knows it's for everybody. Um, we don't have any uh, requirements on income. We don't check anybody's ID. They just come in and take what they need and pass the word along to somebody else. And so we're always um, looking for good donations, um, but so far we are uh, drowning <laughs> in donations. No, we have, we have plenty of donations and it's just a really great resource. And so we are very appreciative. Thank you to the foundation for giving us that funding.
pass our thanks on to Liz. I know that she spends a lot of time with this. Oh, episode, she does. Yes. So that's great. Uh, next on our program is RSVP of Dane County and Stoughton Affordable Transportation Program. We've got this talented man coming forward that I've heard about his programs over the years, and I uh, uh, would encourage everybody, and this is the reason why we put their web pages on, or everybody's contact on, to uh, look further at the information, the history behind these organizations, and um, get a better feel for it. But I'll turn it over to you. And uh, so he's first going to talk about the RSVP program of Dane County. Okay, thank you, Jerry. Uh, yeah, RSVP of Dane County uh, has, uh, is celebrating its 50th anniversary this year. Uh, and uh, we are the largest RSVP organization in the United States. Uh, we've got a record that goes all the way back from when we started with one volunteer and one office person and uh, two drivers. Today we have 31 volunteer stations throughout Dane County. Uh, what the Stoughton Area Community Foundation meant to us last year was something that uh, is very close to my heart. I sp I've uh, Presently, I'm the board, uh, president of the board of RSVP of Dane County. I celebrate my 16th year associating with RSVP this year. I started out as a driver for the Stoughton Senior Center, took over the coordinator job and did that for 13 years. Then I transitioned to the board and I'm celebrating my 10th anniversary on the board. Uh, our program in Stoughton uh, is the type of program that uh, you see all across the country with RSVP, we deal with seniors 60 years of age or older that have transportation needs that they're not able to meet. Uh, we provide a ride to various healthcare providers, personal essential needs, uh, legal, as well as job opportunities. <clears throat> uh, COVID did a job on our drivers this year. We pulled our drivers back uh, when the numbers were way up, uh, not only for the safety of our drivers, but the safety of our riders. A time came when we didn't really know if we would be open up again. We laid out a plan for taking care of the safety of our drivers and our riders, and that cost money. We had to lay out big dollars for thermometers, for self-checking, disinfectants, uh, all of the stuff that was required for a driver to use with each ride, sanitize his car uh, and other things. But uh, the funds that came from the Stoughton Area Community Foundation uh, fit into that real well. So we're back on track, we're back open up uh, completely at this point. And uh, I just want to thank you. Stoughton Area Community Foundation for what they did for us this year. Well, and this is a program, again, as he mentioned, is one of the largest in the nation, or the largest in the nation. So thank you for your many years of dedicated. So let's give a round of applause for the RSVP. Now I want to talk to you about my other job. <laughs> uh, six years ago, when I was still coordinating the uh, RSVP program, the Stoughton United Methodist Church had a small ride program uh, for individuals in the community. And uh, I got a phone call one day from the church saying, <coughs> we cannot attract drivers and our coordinator is leaving. We are gonna have to shut down our program. Do you think you could help us? Well, I went over and talked to them and resurrected the program, much like it runs, it's run much like the RSVP program. Uh, we're now celebrating six years as affordable transportation. I passed out a brief flyer on our program. People say, well, isn't that a duplicate of RSVP? No, it isn't. Uh, RSVP says you have to be 60 years of age or older to use the service. 
With affordable transportation, there's no age requirement. The only thing there is is an income requirement. You have to be within the county's low to moderate income range to use the program. Uh, the other thing is that uh, we do take minors as long as they're escorted by a guardian or a parent. Uh, our services range from uh, all the way from job searches to uh, educational needs, etc. Uh, again, we were able to avoid a complete shutdown of our service. <coughs> and then we ended up training our drivers again the way I did with our SVP. Uh, we didn't really miss a beat. Our, normally our rides in 2021 were uh, way down. Our average rides exceed 350 rides a year within the community. And uh, the first year of COVID, we dropped 116. Uh, last year, the rides went up to 216. And we're on course to do well over 300 this year. The, uh, other thing about the affordable <coughs> transportation program is that uh, I perform a follow-up with these people. After they receive a ride, I call them to make sure that the ride was satisfactory, they got their needs taken care of, and in most cases they have a follow-up appointment. These people uh, range anywhere from uh, setting up <coughs> with your neighbors uh, to the homeless people in our community, we take care of those people for transportation also. Again, uh, with affordable transportation, we don't have the financial resources that RSVP does. So the grant from the foundation uh, really picked up when we lost a lot of our grants, small grants that we work with. They just didn't come forward because of COVID. Uh, but needless to say, the Stoughton Area Community Foundation fill that gap and we never missed a beat with that program. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jerry. We've heard of Wonder Woman. We've heard of Superman. This is the man who is the transportation expert. So thank you for all of you the work you know, you've done. I do have to add this. And the people that you have worked I with. I tell everybody that uses our program. Uh, when they call me, and I, I get a lot of phone calls, uh, they ask me what drives me on this. Uh, I've been living in Stoughton for over 50 years, had a career in finance and banking, but uh, I find nothing more rewarding every morning than waking up and finding somebody that I can help who needs some help. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Uh, Stoughton Area Resource Team, start. Leave some of these here. Stoughton Senior Center, I've been asked to read the following. Uh, their grant, they are very thankful for the funding from the Stoughton Area Community Foundation, granted to us to assist with the renovation of our next door annex. In February 2021, the City Council granted the Senior Center the use of the building. So far, they've used $2,080 of the funds for wiring and communications and uh, to be in, in a step to work in that direction, including in upgrading their city's phone and computer network. Right now, they're a little bit on hold with things until uh, all the rest of the current renters' leases end at the end of the year. The annex, which I, uh, they sent me a copy of and I put it over there on the table, um, it is a larger group presentation area and also will be used for fitness and wellness. Senior center must raise the cost of the renovation and the equipment needed. The center, center has a budget supplied by the city but may, must raise approximately $29,000 more each year to maintain the current levels of programs and support. This renovation that they're going through will cost about $200,000. So this money that they were granted will help cover the wall removal, new floors, ceilings, bathrooms, and new equipment. Each year, the Senior Center offers a, uh, a lot of different activities, as most of you know. 
They will be able to provide uh, less crowded fitness and wellness classes and strength and conditioning, dance, as well as various classes that uh, draw a larger crowd than what their current mat and hair rooms fit. Additionally, the attic will reduce the scheduling conflict that they run into on a regular basis. And it'll free up more space for offering uh, what they can currently do. Uh, a few examples are that are art classes, specific hobby groups such as sewing, photography, and more wellness. In 2021, they were fully open to the public. In July, they had 14,383 total visits to the center uh, of 918 registered participants. So when they were open in uh, 2019 fully, they had 33,500 total visits with 1,098 registered participants. So a real gem of our local community is the Stoughton Senior Center. So they received money from the Stoughton Area Community Foundation towards their uh, renovation. So we wish them the best of success in what they've got going. And uh, so I don't need a round of applause, but for anybody watching, let's give them a round of applause. So next on the list is the Stoughton Community, Community Farmers, Farmers Market. Market. And Sylvia Lawrence is here to present I'm really nervous. I don't do this. I was going to submit something, but I'm so thankful for the grant that we received. We received $6,000 to go to our Buy One for a Neighbor in Need program that started four years ago. Um, originally, we were supporting the United Methodist Food Pantry. We purchased food, meat, eggs, produce directly from our vendors, and volunteers would bring it back to the food pantry. Uh, they typically get their produce from second harvest, but since they're a smaller pantry, they found by the time they got their produce, they had to compost most of it. It was, it was pretty rotten. They were getting the seconds and the thirds. So this was a win-win for our vendors who got to have um, a place to off-put their food so it didn't go to the compost. You can't resell greens after they've been out. Um, in one season, we were able to donate over 1,100 pounds of food and that was with just $2,000. So we were granted 2,500 of our $6,000 goal, and we are just under 500 away from making that goal. So we are very excited. Um, and we are a volunteer-ran market, so that means I'm the co-manager, I volunteer my time, 100% of our, our vending fees after insurance goes back to the community um, through music, uh, outreach, and working with organizations and advertising for other groups. So we really appreciate it, and I think we have a, a lot of mouths that we can feed with that. Mm -hmm. okay. Worthy organization after worthy organization. So I'm pleased to announce or present the next person come forward for the Stoughton Personal Essentials Pantry, Sue Foldy. So, Sue, thank you for being here. Thank you. Along with all the rest of these groups, we are very um, appreciative and thankful for the uh, um, Stoughton Area Community Foundation for their grant. I am Sue Foldy, I'm the board president of the Personal Essentials Pantry in Stoughton here. And the money that we, um, that we received this last year we used to upgrade our website. Um, we had it, um, the whole thing was just revamped, um, done professionally. Um, we had a, a six month contract with them to, up, to do the updates and everything on the website. And they also helped with our marketing by um, posting onto our Facebook page. And we've noticed, um, with the reports that I get each month, every month, our, we've, we're reaching at least 25% more people than we did the month before. Wow. So it's, it, it has been an excellent resource for us. Um, <clears throat> our, our distribution days, we're only open twice a twice a month, but we're helping um, on each of those days. We're helping at least 22 family 
not shouldn't say families, we should be households. Um, a household can be anywhere from one person, um, and we have some families that have like 10 in their household. So it's, um, so saying a household is, it, it varies by how many people are in there, in there. But we are, we continue to help help those folks with their personal essentials, and and they're very appreciative of it too. Thank you. <laughs> Terrific work again. Uh, last one on the list before we go back to the top and catch some of those, and just a brief update that I can share with you on some of them. I've been asked to share this on behalf of Stoughton Yoga. Uh, they used the funds to purchase 10 wipeable bolster covers for their yoga studio. There's more than 100 students per week that visit the studio to participate in yoga classes. The ability to wipe down our bolster covers after each use has enabled us to maintain a much more hygienic environment for our students. Obviously, this has been especially important during the pandemic and also for general cleanliness. We now have 10 bolsters with wipeable covers for our students to use, but the class capacity is 18. It's presented a challenge because they're full, but it's, we rejoice that so many people are using our services. We hope to apply again in 2022 for a grant for multiple, more bolsters and covers, as well as jumbo blocks, another prop that is in short supply at our studio for larger classes. I appreciate the Stone Dairy Community Foundation Grant Committee's work in making the grant process so straightforward and streamlined, and we look forward to working with the community again, Marlene Woodrow, and she was the original founder of Yoga, uh, Stone <laughs> Yoga. So let's give her a big Those of you who might be wondering, the grant process starts really uh, now. Every group that is talking about what they can do in the upcoming year, they need you do a formal application online that's due September 15th. There is a separate committee, the Stoughton Area Community, Community Foundation, that decides um, how they dual out the money that we have available and then uh, take it back to the board for final approval. The checks are issued normally in November and December so that they can activate and do the activities and as you heard earlier, um, your final reports are due in August. So I'm very glad that uh, we can come back to the top. And before I tell you anything about aligning our stars, or if anybody's here, Eyes of Hope, Laura is here. And I'm glad that you could join us. She had said that she might be a little late. So thank you. Provide your report. Thank you so much. Piano lessons, single parent tonight. <laughs> so thank you. Uh, so Eyes of Hope is 13 years old, and I am here to express deep gratitude that we are still going and growing. And a little bit about us, we run a middle school group, and a <coughs> high school girls group, Girl to Girl, and we just obtained a $70,000 grant to expand the after school programming at Kaganza Bayview Community Center, a United Methodist Church to serve the apartments in that area. So we're very excited and it's further um, gratitude that what you continue grows. And we're growing really beautiful things in Stoughton. Girl to Girl this week for middle school met and we went to pottery and uh, six girls and a mentor made pottery. Two mentors sat and watched and just gapped because I can't make pottery and talk at the same time. <laughs> so uh, in the question of the day, we start with what's your high of the day? What's your low of the day? And if you could be any piece of pottery, what would you choose? And my favorite was this little sixth grader said, I would be a candy dish. I'm like, yes, you would. You're so <laughs> sweet. Um, and then last week was our high school group, and we made waffles. And there was a lot of laughter. and. We had a student come back and visit who graduated years ago to tell me that she is graduating with her culinary chef's degree from NATC, and she couldn't wait. She knew it was Monday, so she came back to tell us all about her success. And so it keeps going. You know, those lives that were impacted years ago 
come back to tell us that we mean a lot to them and they mean so much to us. So even more, I think. <laughs> so thank you for the continued work. You're pretty modest in your report. Why don't you just tell them a little bit about your graduate success? Graduate success. The amount of girls that you've helped graduate? We, I am so, modest about that because I feel <laughs> <laughs> So every girl who comes through Girl to Girl program graduates from Stoughton High School. And we're really proud of that statistic. And I have a lot of stories of uh, first generation college or uh, high school graduates who go to college and getting them connected with other kids who have graduated from Girl to Girl who are in college that make it less scary. Mm -hmm. And so these choices continue to branch like a spider web. Like, oh, I can see you're doing it. I can, I can see myself here. I literally, we were going down in the elevator from visiting Milwaukee and the students were like, oh my gosh, I can see it, I can see it. So it's just beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, those of you who don't know, I was a teacher. And in my early years of teaching at the district I was at, I was recruited when we were doing at-risk programming. And so that's a little near and dear to my heart. And it was always um, some people have backgrounds and support and knowledge and skill and confidence. And they're going to make it through those first 12 years of school, and then there's some that need some help, and uh, it's, it's a joy in the work that you're doing. And my little praise at this moment is of no less reflection on anything anybody else is doing. But again, this is why we do what we do, and uh, thank you. With that, we're back to the top. Is there anybody here that would know anything about Aligning Stars Theater? Otherwise, I've got a uh, great. Do you have to, did you send you something? Not a specific report, but so why don't you come on up and share? Well, I don't have a specific. I, I was going to share what I know she's doing. So she sent you something. Go. Well, I just have the original. Oh, okay. Uh, grant. I can, well, I can tell you that she got. Um, I, I know a little about um, Stoughton Center. Come on. Oh, now. I know right now. Yeah, so, don't be shy. This is important. Oh well, yeah, uh, Stoughton's Aligning Stars and Stoughton Center. I can treat you both of those. Um, Great, thank you very much. <laughs> I wasn't ready to do this, but that's okay. Um, so, um, Aligning Stars did uh, get the grant. So, she, uh, Dee Dee Bozak, who's with Aligning Stars, um, she purchased a building uh, next door to the Naughty Norski, and that's going to be used as a rehearsal space and a place for the kids to um, have small shows and events. And um, she wrote the grant, I believe, for new flooring. So. I, she, she was deeply, deeply grateful for the grant. She was, um, she is running her last rehearsal, I think, before the high school show that's going to be this weekend. So she's going to be here today. Um, but she did. She's still fundraising the remainder of the amount. She's getting bids on the new flooring, and um, one of her fundraising programs I know is like selling boards, so you can have like your name. You know, someone could buy a board for the show that she just did, so it's kind of memorialized. But um, I know she's very excited to get that done, and I know she's working on a show. Um, they're going to be casting for Rock of Ages, which will be a summer program, so she's hoping that she'll be able to do some of the rehearsals in that space. So, um, But yeah, she was very, very thankful, and just couldn't be here tonight. And I don't have a formal statement. I, that's better than I was. OK. <laughs> Natalie Norlin also is teaching, but um, also very, very thankful. Um, and she wanted me to let people know that um, the grant that she received ha um, was able to help 15 dancers with monthly scholarships. And, and that also, program again was? That, I'm sorry, that is Stone the Arts. Stoughton Arts Guild. So yeah. Stoughton Arts Guild. So um, help 15 students um, study dance and singing and music lessons and um, also uh, helps them, you know, costumes can be really expensive and helps mm -hmm. purchase costumes for those kids. So opportunities for, to do, you know, arts education can be very expensive. And so that's, it's been a great thing. So she's very thankful. All right. Excellent. Thank you.
Now everybody else is going to sit there and say, oh, I'm not going to say that. I don't want to come up there. I'm just going to come up there. Um, Kiwanis Club of Stoughton. Anybody want to share a few things? Otherwise, they had uh, got some money to uh, help with uh, different things with the students in the school district. They took a very proactive um, step and got all of the principals from the elementary schools together and say, what do you need? And everything from clothing from for children who had an accident to uh, other basic essentials. And it just seems this community, there's so many neat things that happen. Uh, we don't want kids or families to uh, be left out. So the Kiwanis Club is uh, piloting that program and we reach them or give them the, uh, our support. The next one, Madison Reading Project. Again, I don't believe anybody's here this evening with that, but this is specifically for Stoughton and the grants that we give are supposed to directly help Stoughton and it's a program to identify kids or places where they don't have access to free reading books and purchase them and get them in their hands and do any kind of support that they can uh, to the families or kids on that. So they've got some of that money. Uh, neighborhood Free Health Clinic. This person was eager to be here, but her plane flight got changed. So Cindy Anderson was going to report that the Neighborhood Free Clinic who provides free uh, health care and dental and all kinds of wonderful things for people who don't have insurance or don't have the means to pay for it. Uh, they reach out. They did this last year have 313 free appointments that they took people in and provided that service and support. And so the money is going to their programming and their upgrades and their improvements, everything from providing a place for some people who need a place to stay to getting that essential uh, health care. So that is another wonderful, wonderful source. And finally, I believe um, the only other one that we're missing is Stoughton Area Resource Team, or START, which they are in the process of hiring a new uh, director, and I know they're in the interview process, and they're eager to continue a very long established history in this community of helping people out in all different ways. The wagon. The wagon. Coming back to the wagon. Yes. Anybody else want to add anything about START? It, it's just so phenomenal yeah, I don't even think I can give it credit. START's the glue that holds us all together. They, they really are help those, those bits and pieces that keep things running for our community really come through start in a beautiful way. Thank you. Anybody else? And finally, probably one of the most unique grants that we gave out this year is towards the Osberg Wagon. There's only uh, two of them in the world, and they're both in Norway, and there is a gentleman by the name of David uh, Donald, Donald Rorvik who has studied for, I think, close to 30 years the art of um, using wood and sculpting it and making things that are far more wonderful than ever I could make. And uh, this wagon that was found in the hold of a ship about 300 years ago in Norway, and the crazy thing is the ship was so huge, it, it wasn't even in the water anymore. It was buried on a farm. They found this thing. It wasn't put together. This is a picture of the original one, and I've got lots of other pictures over there. And the reason why I have so many pictures is because I did a presentation about the Stoughton Area Community Foundation to a group in December, and I wanted to give them one unique look at grants that were given out, and so these were provided to me. So this wagon that wasn't put together, they put it together, they estimated that it's, um, I think it's 1170 years old. It was found 300 years ago, they excavated the site. It's got incredible amount of wood carving in it that goes into the mythology behind cats and uh, serpents and uh, it's just amazing. And uh, through all their years of research, there's two people who have taken the task on to try and build 
a replica here in Stoughton, and they've got different educational things planned, and it's, it's a work in progress. But it won't be done for a couple of years. They've been at it for a couple of years already, so some money was uh, sent in their direction. So, there you have it. Well, let's give a round of applause to all these other people. And, is everybody set? Can you answer your three questions that the Stoughton Area Community Foundation is most notorious for? The first being this one that we just completed. It is? Grants. It is Anne's report on? Scholarships. And finally, the pass-through accounts that we have that would have been hard to respond as a group uh, is the third really big uh, important component. And uh, we have one small animal business to take care of in, in a moment, but I think it's more important at this time to recognize people going off the board. So I'd like to uh, first of all call um, Lisa forward. Uh, Lisa has served uh, two consecutive three-year terms of being on the board. Uh, just a true asset with her expertise and background in finance and business and being a parent and being a concerned, loving um, uh, representative. So this is a very, very small token of our appreciation certificate that I had signed by the mayor and the president of the church council myself. And it, we are proudly presenting this to you as a retiring board member of the Stone Area Community Foundation. And it simply says, you made a positive difference in our community. And I want to thank Inkworks, who designed this and are willing to work with anybody to do specialized certificates. And here's a note of a few things. I, I wish I could put the winning lottery numbers in there, but um, Me too. I can't. But uh, again, thank you for your years of service. <laughs> Another person with us this evening that's leaving the board uh, is Ann Ash. And Ann, for those of you who don't know, is uh, part of a group of three people at the high school to take the phenomenal load of helping young people um, get through each day, uh, plan their futures, um, answer questions that I can't even begin to imagine all the ones that they get. But, um, I've known Anne for quite a few years, got a chance to work with her, and I have just done such deep respect and admiration for her and, um, and all the things that she's helped done, and she's been wonderful on this board. And she also has volunteered to continue working with the scholarship program because she's so in tune to everything going on up there. So again, Anne, uh, it's with great <laughs> Unfortunately, two of our other board members were not able to be here tonight. I mentioned earlier Cindy McGlynn was supporting her son uh, who was playing uh, professional basketball in another country and I can't even, I don't even know what it is. Does anybody know? Where? In Belgium. So she had uh, indicated to us a month or two ago that she wouldn't be able to be here, but we have one for her. And again, her service, I, it was a daunting task for me to think about stepping into being the president's role after she was the president last year, but she's been extremely helpful in a lot of different ways with that. And then another real sad thing is our other person leaving the board, John Lewis, came down with a positive test on COVID on Sunday, so he wasn't with us, with us tonight either. But again, um, all of these people, their time and expertise has been um, have been terrific, and before we kick these oldsters out of here, can I have the new people coming up on the board come up once more? Because uh, uh, one of the people wasn't here earlier because she had another commitment. And I'm, I'm dressed like this because I was uh, coaching girls on the run, <laughs> <laughs> which received a grant. <laughs> And we, did, we didn't have a strict dress code, so you are perfectly fine. Your bright, smiling face, along with everybody else's, is more than welcome. So, our oncoming board members, uh, we appreciate your commitment and dedication. 
If we had to go through and list all the things that they've done and why they want to serve on the board, we would be here quite a while. But I am thrilled to have you come onto the board. And if you want to introduce the person that wasn't here earlier. Okay, this is Laura Thorpe. So yeah, Laura, I mostly know Laura from working out in the morning at 5.30 tomorrow morning. morning. She's mine. <laughs> She puts me through the ringer, but um, <laughs> Laura's been an educator for many years and has had her hands in a lot of different volunteer activities and is extremely organized and just has a heart of service. So we recommended her for the board and she kindly accepted. So join me in thanking these people. <laughs> so, you can have a seat. We do have one item on uh, business that needs to be dealt with. Uh, due to a, um, a changeover with lots of different reasons, a buddy of mine passed through account has not been active, and we don't have somebody to follow up on that with the original intent of having specific events and targeting individuals who needed help with pet-related expenses. So we have uh, done some research and background on that and have found that uh, we should transfer that money from uh, a password account into the general fund so that it can earn interest back. So do I have a motion from the board to make that move? I'll make a motion. It's been properly moved. Do I have a second? Second. It's been moved and seconded that we take the buddy of mine account and transfer that money into the general fund so it can yield money towards, back towards grants and positive work. All in favor on the board of that motion signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed say no. Motion passes. <laughs> um, before I officially adjourn, is there any other items of business that anybody has? Well, Jerry, I, mean, I just wanted to thank the Sonera Community Foundation from the Innovation Center. Um, as you know, we were incorporated last August. We just got last week the notice from the IRS that we're a 501c3. Uh, we applied last week for the Badger Bounce Back Grant for $5 million. So, uh, you know, the Stoughton Area Community Foundation really helped us because in 2018 when we started up, we didn't have a place to put our donation from the Wallene Foundation. And, and you gave us that space, right? And you also gave us the... Uh, uh, this this winter, or just this spring, when we were ready to apply for this uh, bounce back grant, um, we weren't uh, 501c3 yet. So we went to you guys and said, "Hey, would you be a would you be a pass through for, for us?" Right? And you said yes. In the meantime, um, we found out that you couldn't be. <laughs> but uh, because we went through all that, the city stepped up, and they. Uh, they are the applicant on the grant and we're the recipient. So without you guys, um, the Innovation Center wouldn't actually exist yet. And uh, I just wanted to thank you for that service that uh, was one of the three things that you mentioned, Jerry. And well, I appreciate that. And that's one that had been given $250,000 prior to um, tonight. So that money's been there. And as they move now into their next step, and that's really the intent initially of the pass-through accounts, is to help groups become established, develop their own board of directors, their own constitution, their own accounts, their own tax numbers, and then go forward. Um, I should uh, also mention we just added a new pass-through in the last couple months. Uh, some of you are aware that there's a movement for a resettlement program to help uh, uh, people from Afghanistan find a settlement in here. Notice I didn't say Ukraine, but that might happen again someday. So there's people who started that up and we're gonna be doing their pass-through count with them. So thank you for adding that. And um, again, even though that's one of our three things, it's kind of under the table thing <laughs> that it's not as broadcast, but we, we certainly want to do whatever we can to help groups out. And uh, feel free to join, join us in looking at our website. Um, uh, innovationcenterstoughton.org. And uh, the, the web page people, we, we maybe need to have a separate spot that we list those organizations and a contact and, and, and the like. So okay. thank you. Anybody have anything else for the good of the cause? 
Before I adjourn, if I could just have all of the current board members and the new board members come up. We'll just meet right here. I'd like to get a quick group picture. It's been quite a while since we've been able to do that. And um, so I'd like to do that. So without, yes, yeah, sir. Uh, Jerry, yeah, it, I have a, a comment that I'd like to share with everybody here. Uh, it's a result of the Affordable Transportation Program, something that uh, I call, started to call the Genesville Experience, a very short story, but this is so dear to me. Uh, one morning, on a Saturday morning, I get a phone call from an elderly woman who had moved to Stoughton about six months ago. She had no friends, no contacts, no driver's license. She had just completed uh, radioactive therapy for cancer. Uh, she woke up uh, in the morning and uh, called her doctor because she looked in the mirror in the bathroom and her right eye was completely blood, full of blood. And the doctor told her he was setting up an appointment in Janesville at the uh, laser center she would have to go three times a week, starting at 10 o'clock in the morning for five weeks. So she called me, uh, a neighbor where she was living in another apartment had mentioned my name. She called me and said, I don't know anybody. I don't have any way of getting down there, don't drive, but if I don't get down there starting this Monday and get the first treatment as soon as possible, I'm going to lose the sight in my right eye. I have 12 drivers. Uh, and. That, I re that would require three drivers driving, uh, each driver taking a shift. So I, I put together a relay system with three drivers. I got three drivers to agree to do this. And uh, to make a long story short, she completed the uh, uh, treatments and uh, the doctor in Janesville called me personally and said, I can't believe it. He said, I've been doing this business now for years, and I can't believe that a little city by the name of Stoughton, Wisconsin, came to the, help this lady who was a stranger to Stoughton in the first place, and you saved her sight. Uh, so the writer then called me to tell me how grateful she was, and she said, the doctor finally told me when I after I had my final treatment that had I waited another 12 hours, I would have been blind. That's the most meaningful story to the service that we provide to our people. And that'll always be a story that I'll take with me forever. And I share that with my drivers, and I try to share it with everybody that I talk to. Uh, it's why I feel so deeply in my heart that everybody has to be given a chance and taken care of. So I just wanted to share that important story. Well, I'd like to hear. Anybody else? Again, thank you for your participation this evening. Please continue to pass on the good word of what we do and um, consider maybe someday that you would like to serve on the board. We'd love to uh, uh, work with anybody who has the heart in the right place, and I know this room is full of them. So uh, I'll accept a motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second? Second. All in favor of adjourning, say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion adjourns. And we actually adjourned earlier than last year. So. <laughs>